Senate, where Donald Trump's allies have the upper hand. Well, if you take this sort of approach in terms of criminal law analogy, it would be the same as an indictment, right? And basically, there are these two major charges, one of abuse of power and the other about obstruction of Congress, that will now be sent to a trial to the U.S. Senate. So in this trial, all of the 100 senators in the U.S. Senate, in a sense, become the jurors, and it's all presided by the Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. This is where our uh, kind of analogy starts kind of falling apart, if you wish, because obviously there are huge political uh, kind of undercurrents in all of that. The fact that the Senate at this point in time is controlled by Republicans, and obviously President Trump is a, a Republican president. Uh, he commands uh, uh, basically uh, the, the, the sort of support of uh, the broad party and the leadership within the Senate. So Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is already cooperating with the White House counsel, legal counsel. Uh, so in this trial uh, that's set to take place early next year, once the House, uh, once the Congress comes back from the Christmas reset, uh, recess, it's all going to take place according to more or less wishes of uh, the White House, it seems, given the signals we've been receiving. We've had only three impeachments so far, and uh, uh, the, the last trial, obviously, was one uh, against President Bill Clinton back in 1999. And what we know now uh, are things that we hear kind of in, in the scoop uh, from Washington, D.C., and that's basically that Mitch McConnell is really adamant about making it as short and as sweet as possible. So uh, the um, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, the Democratic leader, basically, uh, in the Senate, has requested that, basically, more witnesses are brought to this trial, which On Mitch McConnell vote, uh, yes. resoundingly uh, 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 rejected and said that he is not going to entertain a fishing expedition, I quote. Uh, and basically, what we can expect is uh, some sort of trial that will try to get back uh, to kind of pretending that it's all business as usual Today, and try to get this off the agenda as President soon as possible. So uh, as far as things look now, we don't expect to see more new witnesses brought in. Well, China's ambassador to Australia has held a lengthy and highly unusual media conference in Canberra. The ambassador struck out at international criticism of the treatment of Uyghur people in Xinjiang province, calling it fake news and saying Beijing has responded firmly in the face of terrorism. The ABC's political editor Andrew Probin was at the event. It has to be said that China has been the subject of considerable uh, criticism, not just from Australia but also the West, uh, whether it's the, the treatment of Uyghurs, allegations of uh, IP theft, um, it's uh, in, incitement of, of, of those who are protesting against uh, uh, those uh, Hong Kong supporters or supporters of Hong Kong independence. Um, but a particular niggle for the Australian Australian government is the treatment of an Australian writer, uh, Yang Hen Jung. Uh, the ambassador confirmed that he had been formally arrested, um, but he seemed to equivocate as to whether he would actually be formally charged. Mr. Yang, Yang Jung was uh, formally arrested last August, I think, with the approval. I mean from the Chinese relevant prosecution <clears throat> authority for being suspect of engaging espionage activities. And the case, I understand, is now still under investigation, further investigations. In due course, he will be formally charged. Well, the uh, the U.S. ambassador Arthur Culverhouse has expressed, uh, perhaps on behalf of the rest of the Western world, the great alarm um, that it has. Um, and the, the West about the treatment of Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province. The ambassador then tackled this question as to whether this was a detention that breached human rights. He says that uh, what's being done in Xinjiang province, this is a de-radicalisation program, one that seeks, seeks to re-educate people who are terrorists. It's nothing to do with human rights, nothing to do with religion. It's about 
fighting terrorism and take preventive actions. I mean, to ensure the safety and security of the ordinary people and to ensure the smooth development and prosperity of the region. The top stories on ABC News. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian says 20 homes have been destroyed by a huge blaze burning southwest of Sydney. The Green Wattle Creek fire is burning at emergency level in the Wallandilly region. It brings the total number of homes destroyed by fires in New South Wales this season to more than 800. The Gospers Mountain mega fire burning northwest of Sydney remains at an emergency level with windy conditions from a cool change hampering firefighting efforts. People in Bilpin and Mount Wilson in the Blue Mountains are being urged to take shelter as it's too late to leave. The blaze has burned through more than 400,000 hectares so far. Temperature records have been broken again as a heatwave makes its way across Australia yesterday.